Hello there! It's time for some old Soviet tech. In this video, I will build the Soviet supersonic fighter interceptor, the Mikhail Gurevich MiG-23P. For this build, I choose the 1 to 72 scale Kolozawa Diprosyov kit. Basically, it's a rebox of the 2011 RV aircraft kit. Let's check it out. Moldings are made out of a softer light grey plastic. There are visible panel lines, small details and rivets. They look quite decent. Details of the cockpit are also decent, but I will upgrade it anyway. As you can see, the moldings offer to build more than one version of the aircraft, but I will stick to the interceptor version. Unfortunately, the air-to-air -air missiles are missing. The Kolozawa de Prostyov kit offers a correct front fuselage pad and air intake for the Perichvatchik version. The clear parts are too thick for my taste. At least they are free from scratches and imperfections. The instruction manual is simplified. You can read from it, but there is no instruction how to paint the jack's exhaust, landing gear and more small details. On the last page of the instruction manual is a technical stances placement guide. The paint skip of this kit are placed at the back of the box. That is very typical for the Kolozal de Prostio brand. All paint schemes are colored in the standard Soviet 80s camouflages. The water slide decals look decent. I hope for the best, they are good quality. Hmm, looks like an interesting kit. Ok, let's build this flagger. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for not missing any new notifications. During the whole build, I will use photo edge metal parts from Edward. They are designed for the old Zvezda or Italeri kits, but I can live with that. Since I decided to use photo edge metal parts, some of the details must go. The ejection seat is a little bit off anyway. It's too wide in some places. I remove the details with a grinding tool and a flat file. The seat is wide in some places. I carefully cut off the unnecessary parts and smooth the cuts out. Luckily, the plastic is soft so the work is very pleasant. Let's begin with the modification. For this work step, I take my time and work very slowly. I had to glue like 40 metal pieces to it. The photo edge metal parts are quite handy for this kit. Most of the fit is very good. So I try to use as many as the Kozawa de Prostio kit allows me to. There is also an offer to modify the jet exhaust turbine, so why not? 
the modified parts are ready for the paint job. Let's give them a proper primer coat. I still don't have the correct blue-green interior color in my stash, but it's not a big problem to create this color shade by mixing sky blue, cobalt blue and bright green. I look at the pictures of the exhaust pipe and they are in a bright green color. The KM1 injection seat is painted with Mr. Color C11 light gal grey. After airbrushing, I paint the details with a thin paintbrush. The small details are instrument indicators, warning lights, switches and push buttons. On the ejection seat I painted the seat belts, metal buckles and the ejection handles. After I finish with painting the small details, I give the cockpit and jet nozzle parts a proper metallic dry brush. Let's seal the paint joint with a glossy varnish coat. This time I will use oil washes from Amomi Jimenez. The washer's drying time is 15 minutes, but if you want to, you can remove it right after applying. My goal is to let the wash be visible in the small details and not over the whole cockpit. I take a dry cotton bud and carefully remove the excessive wash. Now to the assembly. The cockpit tub sits very tight and its fit is not the best. For a stronger bond I had to use super glue. As usual I glue additional weight in front of the fuselage. Next I assemble the jet exhaust nozzle.
Everything went slightly okay until I came to the fuselage assembly. The fit is very bad. I had to use clamps to keep it together. The other bad news is the main fuselage fit and the sweat wings attachment. Both fuselage halves don't fit together. Let me show you. I must deal with this problem before the paint job. There will be a lot of sanding prescribing needed. The same problem is also on the other side of the fuselage. And the fit between the front and the main fuselage parts could be better. There is that big gap showing. Lots of putty will be needed. But the worst part and the big disappointment is the wings attachment. There is no symmetrical mechanism, the pegs are too shallow and the wings don't stay in position. I can simply wave them like bird wings. So what to do? I have two options. Glue the wings in a 72 degree angle or in a fully spread out 16 degree angle. I chose the 16 degree angle. It's been a while since I did a drastic decision with a model like this. It's a big flaw in the kit design, but no matter. Let's keep on building. This kit doesn't have any enterings for the jet engine. I simply paint the areas with the black paint. Before I can glue the air intakes to the fuselage, I need to fill all gaps with putty. The jet exhaust nozzle part doesn't fit so much, so more putty filling. I will deal with this problem later. Next, I glue the vertical and horizontal stabilizers. The radar cone is a little bit big. I must remove some plastic and sand it down to fit the fuselage part. For this work step I use a hobby knife and a nail file. Now that's much better. Now I send down the putty on the air intakes and glue them to the fuselage. Let's glue some additional exterior details. As I said, I'm glad that the Edward metal parts come in handy. Before I can continue with the metal parts, I rather fill those ugly gaps with putty. This way, I get rid of all the ugly imperfections and after sanding, I can focus on small details in peace.
After the putty dried out, I sand it down with a smooth sandpaper. The model is still dirty from sanding. I carefully clean the model with warm water. Now I re-scrap the sanded down panel lines with the help of a holding knife, razor saw and create rivets with a riveting tool. Let's continue with gluing additional photo edge details. The landing gear also includes small photo edge parts. I carefully glue them with super glue. Photo edge details are not enough. I equip the landing gear with lead wires of different diameters. And I add tightening clamps from a self-adhesive aluminum tape. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. Now I continue on the main landing gear. It looks much better now. It will be a pity not to add more details to the wheel wells. So more work with lead wires. Lead wires are ideal for creating these details. They are soft and easy to bend.
Next, I glue the front section of the canopy. The fit is not the best, so after gluing, I must fill the gaps with putty. I wipe out the excess wet putty with a cotton bud soaked in leveling thinner. After cleaning, I mask the canopy with masking tape and liquid mask. The flogger is ready for painting. Let's give it a priming coat first. The first thing I do is to create panel line shading with pre shading. Second, I paint the red icon and other small details with a dark grey color and after it's dried out, I mask it with masking tape. Unfortunately, the paintings manual didn't include any color converter. So I had to check out other sources and paint schemes from different model brands. I started to paint the camouflage with a dark green color. Mostly, I used Gunze Sangyo Mr. Color paints. For the dark green, I used the C309 green. The light green color is a mix of Mr. Color C27 interior green and C1 white. For the light brown, I use the Mr. Color C43 wood brown. The light sandy color is a mix of Mr. Color C39 sandy yellow and C1 white.
and the lower light blue grey color is a mix of Mr. Color C20 light blue and C338 light grey. When I'm done with the camo painting, I focus on painting the wheel wells, air brakes and landing gear. Ok, the airbrushing is done. Now I paint the small details like navigation lights, antennas and the scratch build hydraulic system with a thin paintbrush. Ok, the painting is done. Next, I seal the painter with a layer of glossy varnish coat. Honestly, I was a little bit worried about the colors of the Prostia wet decals. But they turned out pretty good. They are solid, strong, do not tear and are easy to remove from the paper. Let's seal the decals at least with two layers of varnish. Since the model is nicely detailed with lots of rivet lines, I decided to apply the black wash on the whole surface. Maybe it will be a little bit complicated with removing, but I want the rivets to pop up from the surface. With a cotton bud soaked in enamel thinner, I gently remove the excessive wash. Looks like the rivet lines are finally showing up. The next step is weathering. For a better oil weathering and pigment applying, I add a matte varnish coat. 
First, I apply a small amount of oil paint on the surface. Mostly, the weathering is applied on the movable surfaces like the swipe wheel mechanism, flaps, and so. Then, I add enamel thinner and blend the oil paint with the surface. The other simple oil technique is smearing. I gently apply a little bit of oil paint. Then I take a flat paintbrush with a very fine hair and carefully smear the oil paint with the weight of the flight. This way I can create more dirty areas. It's very easy and fun. Next, I add a black pigment on the gun barrels and a Russian earth pigment on the underbelly and wheels. Now I can seal the oil paints and the pigments with a final layer of a semi-matte varnish. Let's glue the landing gear, gear covers and air brakes. Next, I remove the masking tape from the cockpit and glue the ejection seat and control stick. Unfortunately, the kit doesn't include any air-to-air -air missiles. Luckily, I have some in my stash of accessories. At the very end of the assembly, I glue the cockpit canopy with super glue. And the Kawasaki Prostio 1272 scale MiG 23P is finished. In my opinion, although this model suffered a bit, the build was good. The model has its design flaws, but it can be quite decently modified with a scratch build and aftermarket accessories. I hope you liked this video build. Please subscribe to my channel, like or leave a comment down below. If you are interested to see more of my work, check me out on Facebook, Instagram or Telegram. Thank you for watching guys, stay awesome and here's the final reveal.